Hi students, I promised you a supplemental video on the calorimetry experiment. So here we go. So I'm gonna do a cube of metal instead of coins. So we can practice this process, but it's going to correspond exactly to what you guys are doing for your lab. So we have a 32.5 gram uh, cube of metal and we're gonna heat that to 45.8 degrees Celsius and we're gonna throw that into 105.3 grams of water and the water is initially at 15.4 degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna let these two substances come to thermal equilibrium. So we're gonna have a stable high temperature of 17.3 degrees Celsius. And we want to calculate the specific heat capacity of our metal. Now you guys can see from the picture over here that it says that the Q of metal is equal to the negative Q of water. So first of all, what is Q? Now we define Q as heat and M is mass and C is our specific heat capacity. And uh, delta T is our change in temperature. Okay, so delta T, if we've got a change in temperature, is going to be equal to the final temperature of our substance minus the initial temperature of our substance. So that's the definition for each part of Q. Now notice over here on this picture that it says Q metal equals negative Q of water. Now I don't want you guys to worry too much about which side that negative symbol is on. So sometimes you'll see it like it's drawn in the picture and sometimes you'll see it with the positive sign on the other side. So we'll have Q of our metal is equal to negative Q of H2O, or we can have it written the other way where we have Q of water is equal to negative Q of metal, or negative Q of water is equal to positive Q of metal. Don't worry about that. As long as one side is positive and the other side is negative, we will be just fine. Okay. So when we drop the hot piece of metal into the water, what we have is a transfer of heat from the metal to the water until they both become the same temperature. So we've got thermal equilibrium there. So if Q is equal to MC delta T, that means that on one side we have mc delta t of the metal and on the other side we have mc delta t of our water and one side is going to be positive and one side is going to be negative and again at this point don't worry about that okay so if we were to do our experiment based on this piece of metal instead of the coins, how we would figure out what the Q of the coins is and the C of the coins is by filling in the data sheet is like this, except for we have to switch coins to metal. So first of all, it asks us what the mass of our water in our cup is. Now with our specific question here, what we have is 105 grams. So 105.3 grams right there. And I got that right from the question. And then it says mass of coins, and we don't have coins, we have a cube of metal. And the question tells us that we have 32.5 grams. 
Now, the initial temp of the water, again, we're getting that right out of the question, and that is 15.4 degrees Celsius. And you guys would get that from doing your experiment. So you'd use a thermometer and take the initial temperature of your water. And the initial temperature of our metal is 45.8 degrees Celsius. And again, if you guys were doing this in the lab, you would take the temperature of your metal or whatever substance it is that you're dropping into the water. And then you would re record a bunch of data points so you guys would see the temperature of the water changing. And then you would see it come to equilibrium so you'd get a high temperature where you had the same temperature uh, for quite a while. Now it says the final temperature of water in cup and your metal. So this means their final temperature and the final temperature is the same. That's the temperature of the metal and the water together at thermal equilibrium and that is 17.3 degrees Celsius and we got that from right here. You guys will get it from taking the temperature yourself or watching the video. Now it says, what is the delta T of the water? So in order to calculate delta T of the water, we have to do the final temperature of the water minus the initial temperature of the water. And the final temperature of the water is 17.3 degrees Celsius. And the initial temperature of the water is 15.4 degrees Celsius. And if we do the math on that, we're gonna get 1.9 degrees Celsius there, okay? So delta T of water is 1.9 degrees Celsius. Now, the change in temperature for our metal. Change in T for metal, which will be coins for you guys. What we have is the final temperature, which is the same as the final temperature for the water. Again, they're at thermal equilibrium. And we subtract the initial temperature. And the initial temperature of the metal was 45.8 degrees Celsius. And that's going to give us a change in temperature of negative 28.5 degrees Celsius. Now don't worry about that negative symbol because the equation relating the Q of H2O and the Q of the metal has a negative built into it. So we'll see that taken care of. Now the next part says go ahead and calculate Q for H2O. And if we're looking at the equation for Q, we can see that we have MC delta T. Now the mass of the water is 105.3 grams. And the specific heat capacity of water is something that's known, and we would get that off of a chart, and we would find that that is 4.184 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius, and that sounds like a really weird unit, but don't worry, things will cancel out. And the change in temperature for water is what? 1.9 degrees Celsius. So we have 1.9 degrees Celsius there. And now we can see that things are going to cancel out. We have grams divided by grams. And anything divided by itself is what? 
is one. And we have degrees Celsius divided by degrees Celsius. And we're left with units in joules, and that's great because that's a unit of energy. And what we're going to get for that is 837.09 joules. And if we turn that into two significant digits, we're going to get 840 joules. So Q for water in this problem here is 840 joules. Now, the lab asks us to go ahead and do the Q for our metal. Now, there's no calculation for this because as we can see up here, the Q for the metal is equal to negative Q for the water. So if we have Q metal, is equal to negative Q of water, that means that the Q of the metal is equal to the negative version of 840 joules. So that is negative 840 joules. Again, you guys, don't worry about whether we put the negative on the side for Q of water of, or Q of metal because the negative takes care of itself later. Okay, so then we have to do the specific heat capacity for our metal. And the specific heat capacity, what we can do up here is say that if Q is equal to MC delta T, the magic of algebra tells us that C is equal to Q divided by M and delta T down there. So we're gonna use that equation and we're gonna put it right down here. Okay, so C is equal to Q over M times delta T. Now we're looking for the heat capacity for our metal. So C of metal is going to be equal to the Q of our metal divided by the mass of the metal times the change in temperature for our metal. And if we plug in what our values tell us, we'll see that we have a specific heat capacity for the metal that's equal to negative 840 joules. I got that from right there, we already calculated it. Divided by the mass of the metal, and the mass of the metal is up here. 32.5 grams. And the change in temperature for the metal is right here, negative 28.5 degrees Celsius. So yippee, what we can see is that our negatives are gonna cancel out. So yay, because none of us really like to work in negative values. And that should make us happy. And we should get that we have 0 0.903 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. And that's fabulous because the units for our specific heat capacity are in joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius right there. And so what we would do is put that the C of our metal is 0 0.903 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. Now, if you guys wanted to cut it down to two sig figs, because that number on top has two sig figs, 
you would make the answer into what? 0 0.90, because then we'd have two sig figs after the decimal. And you guys would go ahead and do another trial and fill in all of this information. And you would get another value for your specific heat capacity of your metal. And hopefully it's pretty close to 0 0.90. If it's not, if it's wildly off like 0.45, then you should probably do your calculations again. Or if you were in the lab, you should do your experiment again. And down here it says to go ahead and average those. So you would take this value and that value right there that you'll calculate, add them together, divided by two, and you guys will get an average heat capacity for your coins, but in our case, it's our metal. And if we didn't know what our metal is and we were asked to take a guess at that based on our data, what we do is we'd look at a table and we'd look at a list of metals and we'd go, oh my goodness, aluminum has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.903. So our cube of metal was probably aluminum, okay? Now, obviously with the coins, you guys are going to have a different heat capacity, but this is how you do the math on it. All right, guys, I hope that makes it easier for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.